Hi, this video is going to take a look at problem 1.5.5s in Broberman. It is an old exam question. I'm going to use it as a way of introducing the idea of an effective annual discount rate, which is just another way to measure interest via a problem to find the interest earned during a year. Kind of an odd problem, actually. It's in section 1.5 of Broverman, which is about effective annual rates of discount. But you really don't need that idea to be able to solve the problem. Let's take a look at the problem. Bruce and Robbie each open new bank accounts at time zero. Bruce deposits 100, and Robbie deposits 50. Each earns an effective annual discount rate of D. Okay? We're going to put off exactly what D means, though right now I will tell you <clears throat> Excuse me. If the annu effective annual discount rate is the same, that also means the effective annual interest rate is the same. So I'm going to solve this problem in terms of the effective annual rate of interest, I, first, and then we'll talk about what D means. So it'll introduce the idea of what an effective annual discount rate is. The amount of interest earned in Bruce's account during the 11th year is equal to X, and also that's the same as Robbie's account during the 11th, the 17th year. The goal ultimately is to calculate x. So again, let's solve this problem uh, not worrying about what effective annual discount rate is at first. Uh, what is the amount of interest uh, in Bruce's account in the 11th year? That is going to equal this unknown x that we want to solve for. Um, there's a quick way to write down this expression, but I want to solve it initially, write it down in terms of a, a less quick way of writing it down. Write it as the difference. How much has it grown to um, after 11 years have gone by? Okay, this is an effective annual rate, so I don't need to divide by n here. 11. That's the amount it's grown to after 11 years, and here's the amount it's grown to after 10 years, and the difference then would be the amount of interest earned during the 11th year. This can be rewritten by factoring out the common factor of 100 times 1 plus i to the 10th, and then what's left over is a 1 plus i minus 1. What's left over is really an i. And so this expression, 100 times 1 plus i to the 10th i is the amount of interest earned during the 11th year. I want you to realize that this expression can be uh, figured out without writing a difference. This quantity is the amount uh, in the account after 10 years have gone by. If I multiply that by the effective annual interest rate, that will be the amount of interest earned during the 11th year. So you don't have to write this as a difference. You can just jump to this last expression that I'm going to fully circle here to get this amount of interest. Uh, same thing for Robbie during the 17th year. I won't bother writing 17th year. 100 times 1 plus i to the 16 is how much money Robbie has. Excuse me, sorry. 50 times 1 plus i to the 16th is how much money Robbie has in the account at the beginning of the 17th year. Multiplying that by i will give the amount of interest earned during the 17th year. So now I set these equal to each other and solve for i, and once I've got i, then I can use either equation to solve for x. So let's see, if I set these equal to each other, I can divide both sides by 50 to get a 2 on the right side. I can also cancel the i's, and I can divide both sides by 1 plus i to the 10th. It looks like I'm going to get 1 plus i to the 6th equals 2. So i is going to be 2 to the 1 6th power minus 1. 1 6th is 0.16 with the 6 repeating. I'll just type that in. 2 power 0.16666667 say. Minus 1. The interest rate is about 12.2462%. Go ahead and write 0.122462. I'll, I'll store this uh, in the calculator's memory register here in zero. I need to figure out x now. I can again use either expression. I think I'll use this expression. So let's add 1 to that. Raise it to the 16th power. 
multiply by i, multiply by what's in register zero times recall zero, and then times 50. X looks to be 3888, and that is correct. That is the amount of interest you earned during those years for Bruce and Robbie, respectively. All right, now let's take the opportunity to um, talk about what an effective annual discount rate is and see that we could have solved it with this idea as well, uh, though again, we didn't have to. I probably won't take the entire time to fully solve it with that idea, but just indicate how it would be solved. What is an effective annual discount rate? Well, let's think about let's think about Bruce's account. So Bruce starts out at time zero. We're talking about Bruce here with a 100 deposit. At time one, because we found I to be 12.2462%, uh, Bruce's account will grow by 12.25, say to 112.25. Let me uh, let me actually keep more decimals. Even though we're around, you know, if this were dollars, we're rounding to the nearest cent. 12 uh, 100 112.2462. Uh, let's, two. let's keep more decimals like that. Okay, so the the interest rate of 12.2462% is what the amount of interest is $12.25 or 12.2462 as a fraction of the starting amount. That is 12.2462%. That is I. All right. What is D? What is the effective rate of discount? It is the amount of interest, not as a ratio, not as a fraction of the starting amount, but of the ending amount. Now let me go ahead and use all the decimals here. This is going to be D, the effective annual rate of discount. Some financial transactions, especially with government transactions, it seems, do use, do quote interest as an effective annual discount rate, especially with bonds. Uh, I guess that can occur in a corporate setting too. So let's see here. Um, what will this be? 12.2462 divided by 112.2462. It's going to be a bit smaller percentage. It's going to be about, uh, well, it's 0 0.10910244, about 10.91% is the effective annual rate of discount. Why can the problem be solved this way? What is the relationship between I and D? Um, essentially here, D is I over 1 plus I. You know, if we were depositing 1 instead of 100, um, this would be the amount of interest earned. This would be the ending amount. That ratio between I and D, that relationship does hold. Let's see, so again, let's confirm this. I is 0.122462. If I div, uh, add one to that, take its reciprocal and multiply by 0.122462, I do get the same thing, 10.91% for D. So that's a relationship between D and I. Uh, you can also use this to solve for a relationship, uh, the inverse relationship, if you like. This implies also that 1 plus i times d equals i, so d plus i d equals i. We can solve for i here as the goal. Um, i times 1 minus d will equal d, and i will be d over 1 minus d. That's another relationship between them. Uh, let's see here, so let's confirm that. So here is d now, again, 0.1091. Store that now in register zero. Let's use this equation to confirm that we get back to I. If I take one minus what's in register zero, that's on the bottom. Uh, we're going to divide by that, so take its reciprocal and multiply times D, what's in register zero. And we do get I back again. 
0.122462. Oops, can't quite see that right there. That is the matching I. Um, there's a relationship between these things and V as well. It turns out, you can check this, that um, D equals 1 minus V. What was V again? That was the effective annual discount factor. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to, this is I here. If I add 1 to that, that's 1 plus I. That is the effective annual growth rate. 1 over that is V. And 1 minus that is D. Make it a negative and add 1. There's back to D. You can see that relationship did hold. This was the same as 1 minus 1 over 1 plus I. Where am I going with this? We want to ultimately finish this video. So we're seeing these relationships between I, D, and V here. We ultimately want to finish this video and by believing you could have solved this problem with D here, probably the best way to do that is to solve this equation for 1 plus I. Um, I can rearrange a little bit. I can write 1 over 1 plus I is, uh, which is V, is 1 minus D. That's another relationship. And that means 1 plus I is 1 over 1 minus D, or if you prefer, 1 minus D to the negative 1 power. And so to solve the original problem, every time we see a 1 plus I, we could really have a 1 minus D to the negative 1 power. And everywhere we see an I, we could write that as D times 1 minus D. So the equation back up here, you might want to pause the video and write this down, the equality between these two things right there could have been written also in terms of D as 50 uh, times 1 plus I to the 16th becomes, uh, looking here, 1 minus D to the negative 16th. And then there was an I, and that becomes, uh, using this equation, becomes D over 1 minus D. And on the other side, there was 100 times 1 plus I to the 10th. That becomes 1 minus D to the negative 10th times i, again, is d over 1 minus d. We could cancel these things, cancel this with this to get a 2, uh, divide both sides by 1 minus d to the negative 10. Looks like we'd get 1 minus d to the negative 6 equals 2. Uh, 1 minus d to the positive 6 would be 1 half. We could take the 6th root of both sides, ultimately solve for d, and we should get the same thing. Okay, and I'll leave that to you to check that you get the same thing and ultimately the same thing for x.